Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Lower Decks, Season 2. I've done a podcast on the first season. This one might be a little, a little shorter. I don't know how much more I can say I love this show. Star Trek Lower Decks is an animated show centering on the characters of the lower decks, the lower ranking officers that have the mundane, somewhat, you know, shitty jobs. The characters are back, all of them. There seems to be a, a consistency with the animation and the voicing. So I'm going to guess that there was no major changes. So season one flows into season two very nicely. If not for a little bit of hijinks that um, are really fun. And getting into the whole headspace of Star Trek, it's a different feeling with this show. I'm not a big fan. I think I talked about this in my first episode but uh, for season one. But just in a quick summation here, I'm a big fan of everything Star Trek except for Picard. I'm giving Discovery a little bit more of a chance as I get caught up on it, but it's just, I think I describe it as not my Star Trek, but such good actors, such good, um, you know, uh, elements to it that you could appreciate it. This is one of those things where I'm going to say it's a great show, funny, irreverent, off the walls, off the chains, off the fucking rails, it can get belligerent, uh, zany, and I'm loving it. Again, I could see the, you know, opposite effect of someone saying, this is not Star Trek, it's not for me. Fine, I get it. I think one of the people here is a creator of Rick and Morty. It has all the um, same people. I'm not sure if, so, how many of them are famous, but Tawny, Newsom, Jack Quaid, Noel Wells. Eugene Cordero, Darwin Lewis, Jerry O'Connell, Fred Tadascore, and these are the voice actors that come back. Just superb on so many levels. If you're not going to get into the animation and the, you know, offbeat humor, I get it, and I can see that being something a lot of people might just, you know, not enjoy, but if I'm trying to look at it as um, a critical piece, I think it's excellent. I think it hits everything it's supposed to for what it wants to do. It's going to be fun. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the first one. It's been a while, but there's something to the new Holly Quinn cartoon. This is, you know, um, MODOK, where they have little elements that you can do in animation that really stands out, and you can make it zany overboard some of these episodes are just so much fun callbacks and a and a you know with a little twist on them there's uh i think it's the first episode um they do the whole strange energies that's the name of the episode and oh be careful with strange energies it, they just label it that and you know you can get godlike powers and of course it happens and this first officer or whatever is like a big cloud of energy being and he's chasing the ship and one of the characters goes uh brace for grabbing because he's got hands it just slipped in there and got me it's just fun and again i could see the people being like oh this is not for me whatever you know i get it but um i don't even think you need to be a star trek fan for this and i think that's its beauty that it's going to hit, and their audience is just fun to rev and humor on a cartoon, and there's science fiction involved, and the elements of Star Trek are there, of course, the whole, um, you know, hierarchy of ranks, and where they sit, and the show's really about the underdog Lower Decks characters who seemingly save the day, and hardly ever get credit. And the show has a good way of doing these standalone plots and keeping a story going through for the season. Uh, character development with some poignant moments that, you know, 
you can relate to in some level. The bleep curse words and it's not bleep curse words. It's just hilarious. Uh, you know, but a part of me can see that like, hey, look, this is supposed to be Star Trek and it's Gene Roddenberry. I get it. But I'm sorry. I'm going to really enjoy this in a time of Star Trek not being for me in a way. Like I said, Picard, I, I hate season one. I'm dreading season two, but I'm going to go in with an open mind as best I can. Discovery, you know, getting up to the season three, four, I'm trying to, you know, give it a shot. There's um, some excellent stuff in each one, I'll admit. Maybe I would favor Discovery better. And I'm really excited about Strange New Worlds, which is going to focus on Captain Pike and his Enterprise. I think there's even a, um, a new casting for a young Kirk to play some sort of young version. And I think young Uhura is going to be on there too. Really looking forward to that. So Star Trek isn't um, being, I'm not being turned off by it. It just might be not for me. Although I might argue season one to Picard how bad it is, but, um, you know, I'm not really looking for that. Lower Decks is going to let you have a fun time with some animation, with characters that are growing and uh, relationship stuff. And I mean, zany Star Trek relationship stuff. It really rides that line of being um, really interesting and entertaining for me. And if I went through all the episodes, there'd be... You could see all the, you know, correlations between the original show and some of the new stuff they're doing, bringing back Riker and, um, how do you say his name? Boimer? Boimler. His, um, uh, his, you know, time spent on the ship and how they bring him back, which I thought was hilarious. There's just so much for me. To enjoy here, it's definitely a show I recommend. There's just um, a fun irreverence that I really enjoy out of it. Plus, I'm a big fan of Star Trek to begin with. I'm actually playing a uh, mobile Star Trek game called Fleet Command. And they just brought the ship in and some of the characters for Lower Decks with unique abilities. So it's a little bit uh, exciting time in that way. Because I'm in an alliance. They fucking made me lead it, which is, you know, whatever. And it just fits in well. I mean, although people are complaining about the cartoon look, because, you know, your avatars and the characters are cartoonish, or cartoons. But um, I'm looking forward to getting the ship, although Star Trek Fleet Command is really stingy. It's expensive. If you want things quick. So, me being mostly a free-to-play player, I have to take the free path, which is like, you know, you're, you're going to be six months behind, or so, whatever, because you're going to have to get the stuff the free way. I don't have $100 to spend on the game, but it's supposed to be a unique ship, and its role it plays. The whole package, to me, is excellent, from the class of the ship, mentioning it in the hierarchy of nerdism with Star Trek, to the rankings, and wanting to be more like the, you know higher ranking offices and where their goals will be their aspirations like where do they want their career that kind of plays in and changes all the normal things about life and just going through um this you know dilemma of episode of after episode of zaniness because it is star trek i think the ceratos is like known for second contact like that's its thing like it won't be the first ship sent there it's always the second and the season ends with a um <clears throat> first first contact meaning it's the first time this ship has made first contact and where it's going to lead i think is really interesting i'm definitely all for it and some of the unique spins are just so much fun for me, even if they touched on the bug, and one of the ways they touched on the bug was hilarious. They did an episode, and they were highlighting lower decks from other races, so you got the Klingons and the uh, Vulcans, and you kind of see a little bit, not as much, obviously, and how it works, and how it compares. 
to his systems and obviously the Klingons are bloodthirsty, blah, blah, blah. And, and then when it goes through the whole episode, you know, doing its things, plot things, and its lessons to be learned in some zany, offbeat way. At the end of it, it shows you the Borg Cube lower decks. And it uses that to write out the screen with the end credits. So nothing happens. None of the lower decks move. They're just in their pods. Little touches like that, just like, um, they get me. I bring up once in a while this, um, The Honeymooners, old show, black and white, Jackie Gleason, Arcani. And there's a scene where, for years, I didn't know, I didn't get it. And then one day I was doing something, I spit up my drink because I finally got it. It was a show that was on late night every night for years. A staple of, you know, the 11, 11.30 at night, it comes on, you have to watch it, it's just classic, the odd couple that days. Anyway, they're on the train, he's got magic handcuffs to go into a thing, and Norton puts the handcuffs on and they can't get it off. So they're stuck together, he can't, alright, well, we gotta get some sleep to get in the bunks and they're handcuffed, so Ralph's got his arm up, and uh, anyway, Norton says, you mind if I smoke? And Ralph on the bottom bunk just goes, I don't care if you burn. Now, as a kid growing up, I didn't really understand it. In my teenage years, I spit up my drink. It was just, anyway, subtle elements and the humor that's there, the little Easter egg things that you might notice, um, the voice acting they're bringing back. You've got Tom Paris from Voyager and... Of course, it's going to be the fan, fanboy moments and, you know, how big they are as nerds. But, again, like I said, this growth in here is um, some standalone elements, but there's a sta- through line that goes through the season. Well balanced, well done. I mean, you've got a short episode cartoon, and it's just Star Trek that's made really good. It's excellent, the voice acting, the humor. And again, maybe I'll wrap this up in a way of saying, I can see this as not being for people. Just, I'm not into zany, corny Star Trek. Even the original series is Enterprise um, animation. Maybe might have been more serious, but I'd have to you know, go back and search those things out. But we got season two of Lower Decks. Just fun ride, beginning to end. I love it. I'm smiling the whole time. For me, it doesn't bother me. And like I said, I play the game on my mobile. You know, it's probably the game I play the most. There's a, um element that was just brought in for Lower Deck, so I'm happy. But, you know, the, the games want you to pay to get it first. And it's not accessible. Even with the Star Trek game being mostly based on the movies until they got there, you know... They got the franchise, they can do all of them. So they started doing other stuff, bringing in Next Generation and stuff. It's fun to see it in the game. And I might have said this in the first one, but if you ask me from what's going on online and when you look at people's reviews and their behind-the-scenes stuff, Lower Decks is what really saved Star Trek recently from Discovery and Picard's somewhat failure in my eyes now they're not failures because of how the system works in my opinion i just don't think you're going to get true numbers from their device apps and you know they put out discovery they put money into that and it's this show that came out low-key and just knocked everybody out so i'm going to say there's a majority of people that really love this show it's got legs, it can last. I mean, what do you have to do to keep this thing going? You've got all the lore to play with. You can even play with Discovery and the original Enterprise to the Enterprise with Scott Bakula. And just, you got so many things to do, so many people you could bring in. And they keep mentioning characters and little things they bring in. Like I said, the little bulk thing, you got a supercomputer. Um,. Uh, evaluation type stuff, which I thought was hilarious. Um, one of the main characters, but boilers. Am I saying it right?
You know, I just wonder if, um, I keep saying in my head boiler, but it's, I think it's, hmm, Boimia, Boimia. Anyway, me and my, uh, <laughs> my use of the English language or perceived names just go through all my podcasts, especially the articles I read on science, and you'll have a laugh how bad I am. And I think this is where I'll start wrapping it up. I mean, I'm not going to go episode by episode, but in wrapping this up, Star Trek Lower Decks is an amazing show. I love it. I think it's done well on every level. But I can see a portion of people that just won't accept it, who are too into the original, don't want the difference. And even when I say original, I'll go back to the Captain Kirk days, all the way up to DS9 into Enterprise with Scott Bakula. There's a level of corniness and zaniness that goes there, but it's mainly, a, you know, more straightforward. This is just takes it and just goes crazy, and I am loving it, so... I don't know if that'll be a um, continuing thing with this, if this season three I do and four. For me, where's it going to go wrong? I don't know if it can. Just give me fun adventures, um, solid you know, development, a little through lines here and there, because I'm not even desperately needing it. And I guess it's just that kind of recommendation. You're into funny cartoons watch it you like star trek watch it but they might rub you the wrong way i guess is a good way to put it well there we go star trek lower decks totally worth giving it a shot all right everybody i wish you all the best i'll see you all next time take care